So m most patients tend to have uh, an intuitive and you know um, a good understanding of what anaesthesia is, in the sense that we, we give them medication to make them fall asleep, and they, they know it's not real sleep. It's a state of drug-induced unconsciousness. Um, I think what they have less intuitive understanding of is the uh, is the amount of expertise and vigilance and intervention required to keep them safe as a consequence of the anaesthetic. So I think when people think about a typical workday for anaesthesia, they're thinking about a theatre day. So, so the work for that really starts before the day itself. So, so we usually contact the patients or at least have read about the patients and know a lot about them before the day of surgery. Day starts early, so we're one of the earliest starting specialties, about 7.30. We see the patients face to face, uh, we then go to the theatre and meet the theatre team and we have a discussion about how the day may progress, any particular challenges um, and, and that works as a team huddle and a team bonding exercise as well. Um, I usually have a registrar, that's a anaesthetist in training who will become a consultant in a few years time if they're successful um, and we, we teach throughout the course of the list, uh, make sure all the patients are safe during our operations. When the last patient uh, appears to be recovering well, then that's the end of our day, we can all go home to our families. Well, I mean, I, there, there are so many things really to enjoy about anaesthesia, um, especially I feel it fits my personality type. I think um, the thing I most enjoy really is working as part of a team to look after other people. Um, I think that when you do so, um, you you see that other people aren't there because they have to be there, they're there because they want to be there and they genuinely get a lot of um, satisfaction from looking after other people. You, you can do things individually, um, but you, you, you don't really um, sense that kind of very finest part of humanity as, as an individual. Do, do you know what? Most patients are nervous. In fact, I think all patients are nervous if they don't, even though they don't show it. Um, Really simple things go a long way. So, so staying calm myself, making sure the, the theatre team are calm, um, smiling, you know, making sure the patients know that I'm really taking the time to listen to what they're saying. And when one does that, you can see them you know, start to relax and their nerves start to dissipate. That then leads us on to the next thing, which is digging a bit deeper and seeing if there's anything in particular that's upsetting them. You know, many patients will be worried about perhaps pain or nausea or confusion afterwards. Um, but many more patients have a less kind of precise worry about um, loss of control and handing over their safety to somebody else. Once we talk about that, talk about the safety profile of anaesthesia, then, then they're a lot more relaxed. Uh, commonest questions I get asked are not related to anaesthesia. Um, commonest question by far is, Doctor, do you know when my operation will be? And, and I think to some extent that speaks to that, the current um, um, challenges within the healthcare system. Um, next after that is, Doctor, do you know how long my operation will be? Um, so, so those are kind of non-anesthetic questions that get asked. Um, more anesthetic questions, Ma many patients don't really ask anything because it's not their first time. Uh, many patients who are having their first anesthetic will ask, how long will it take me to recover from the anesthetic? In other words, how long will it take me to feel normal again? When can I go back to work and how should I manage my medications around the time of surgery? Firstly, I think um, as you're working your way towards an anaesthetic, just write down all the questions that you have on a piece of paper. Bring them to the anaesthetist um, and we'll ask them. So, so many patients have questions. There's no such thing as a silly question. We've heard them all before and we'll, we will 100% take our time to answer them because they result in better outcomes for yourself and for us as well. Um, second piece of advice is um, follow the guidance about healthy living. So, so we've all internalised this guidance to some extent and, and that's things like stopping smoking, limiting your alcohol, exercise, healthy diet, positive mental well-being. They can all contribute towards better outcomes after surgery. 